Welcome back to All About Winning Daily Fantasy Sports. My name is Ty Patton. If your Sunday Week 12 didn't go as well as planned, never fear. The Monday Night Football Showdown Contest is here. Showdown contests for Monday Night Football are for two groups of people. Those who had a profitable Sunday and have extra bankroll, and those who didn't have such a, a profitable Sunday and are trying to recoup. Tonight's game features the 8-2 Baltimore Ravens, led by the dynamic Lamar Jackson and the 6-4 and four Los Angeles Rams, who are trying to stay in the playoff picture. The Ravens have been installed as a 3.5-point road favorite with a game total set at 47 points. As I always do for the showdown contest, I first take a look at the showdown numbers that are fantasy relevant. Up to including last night's showdown, Sunday night football showdown contest between the Packers and 49ers, there have been 84 showdown contests. I might add that there were also five other showdown contests on DraftKings other than the Green Bay San Fran game last night, and those games were Dallas, New England, Jacksonville, Tennessee, Tampa Bay, Atlanta, Carolina, New Orleans, and Seattle, and Philadelphia. And I mentioned this in my previous video that um, DraftKings does have showdown contests for uh, a random set of games each Sunday. So it's not just limited to the Thursday night, Sunday night, and Monday night primetime games. I include these games into my overall numbers as well to get a larger sample, which are factored into the overall averages. These 84 games have an average winning score of 132.09. The average winning captain score is 42.62. Since the average captain score represents 31% of the average winning score, I focus a lot of attention to the captain's position. With that being said, these are the numbers that are fantasy relevant to the captain's position itself. The underdog running back has appeared in the winning captain's position more than any other uh, position 18 times for 21 percent. The favored quarterback has appeared in the winning lineup in the captain's position 15 times for 18 percent. The favored wide receiver 14 times for 17 percent. The favored running back has appeared in the winning lineup um, 11 times for 13 percent. The underdog wide receiver has appeared in the captain's spot in the winning lineup 10 times for 12 percent. Favorite defense special team has appeared in the captain spot in the winning lineup five times for 6%. And likewise, the underdog quarterback has appeared in the uh, captain spot for the winning lineup five times for 6%. The underdog kicker has appeared two times in the winning lineup in the captain spot for 2%. The favorite tight end has appeared in the captain spot two times for 2%. One of them was last night, George Kittle. The underdog tight end has appeared in the captain spot one time for 1%. And the underdog defense special team has appeared in the captain's spot for the winning lineup one time for 1%. Now, I also combine these numbers by overall position, whether they're underdog or not, and it, it reveals the following. Running backs combined have been in the winning captain spot more than any other position 28 times for 33% or one-third. Wide receivers are next for 24 times for 29%. Quarterbacks are 20 times for 24%, all others represent 12 times for a total of 14%. The overall straight up one loss record of these captains is a record of 58 wins and 26 losses. And that breaks down as follows. And that 58 and 26, by the way, is 69%. Running backs in the captain spot, their teams are 22 wins and 11 losses. Wide receivers, a little bit closer, 13 wins and 11 losses. Quarterbacks have the best win percentage of 14 wins and uh, six losses. So you're asking, do these numbers unlock the mystery of tonight's showdown between the Ravens and Rams? Absolutely not. But they do tell us a few things which might give us an edge. Running backs and wide receivers account for 62% of the winning captain spot. Captains are on the winning team 69% of the time. Underdog running backs appear more than any other position in the winning captain spot. In tonight's game, there is a captain that checks all these boxes if you believe the Rams can win the game, which we're going to get to. I have a process that I utilize when building my lineups, which includes the following. I take a stand. Who do I think is going to win? Next, what is the path to victory for this team to win the game? What are the matchups that favor this team to win the game? How are they going to have to do it? Who are the players that support this theory 
and then I narrow it down to a few top players and build my lineups around them. I like to have a, a few rules for myself when I'm building. If I have a quarterback in the captain spot, I generally like to have at least two targets in the flex spot. If I have a wide receiver in the captain spot, I want to have a quarterback, his quarterback, uh, with him in the flex spot because the only way he's going to go off is if that quarterback's throwing him the ball. And those are just a few of the. I, and also the um, between the two defense special teams and the two field goal kickers, I try to only use one. I rarely use more than two. Very rarely, like less than five percent of the time. So that's how I um, build my lineups. In tonight's game, the Ravens come in riding a six-game winning streak, and the Rams are, str- are struggling just to stay in the playoff picture. So their backs are against the wall in this game. A lot of attention is being focused, and rightly so, to Lamar Jackson. Um, but there's not been much interest or talk about the Rams' um, offense and um, what they can do to um, win this game. I would like to say also that Lamar Jackson is 20,400 in the captain spot, and I don't think that I've seen a player that price that high. And fair enough, he is the Ravens offense. He does it running, he does it passing, um, and I mean, he's averaging 28.7 fantasy points per game, and that's Getting to that is difficult for a quarterback, so um, he's definitely having a, a, a dynamic season. He's going to be popular in the captain spot, even though he is that price. Everybody knows their offense runs around that. I think one of the probably the um, the popular builds tonight is going to be Jackson in the captain spot, and um, either Rams on slot, you know, or Jackson in the captain spot, um, basically running him naked with whatever of the top Rams you can get in there. I think that's what's going to be popular. Although I believe this game will be a difficult task for the Rams, I am going to lean towards the home team who are fighting for their playoff lives at 6-4. and four. Using the information I shared with you earlier in this video in reference to captains, I'm going to take a contrarian stand and build a lineup around how I think the Rams can win. I believe this begins with Todd Gurley. The Rams have to get Gurley going because this is the weakness of the Ravens. Or they don't have many um, weaknesses. They're really good against the pass. They're middle of the road, mediocre against the run. But if the Rams are going to do it, they're going to do it on the ground. The two losses that the Ravens have had have come at the hands of the Chiefs and the Browns. In the Chiefs game, uh, LaShawn McCoy had eight carries for 54 yards, one touchdown. Three receptions for 26 yards and another touchdown. And Daryl Williams also had nine carries for 62 yards and five receptions for 47 yards. So it was the running backs in that game with Mahomes. In the Browns victory, Nick Chubb had his best game, 20 carries for 165 yards and two touchdowns. And he had added three receptions for 18 yards. And that was in Baltimore. So the the games that they have lost, the running backs have been involved. So if I'm going to lean towards them losing, I believe that the path for them to lose is through the running game. And in the last week's game, the um, Rams got Gurley going against the um, Bears, and they're going to have to they're going to have to set him loose in this game and, and let him get it done. Uh, let him run it. Let's throw it to him in, out of the backfield. And I believe they can um, get a win. Another thing I wanted to mention about the um, Ravens' two losses, which I thought was um, really interesting, those two losses combined averaged 63 total points. They lost 33-28 and then lost 40-25 to to 33-28 to the Chiefs and 40-25 to to the uh, Browns. So that's another thing to um, factor in as well. If the Rams are able to establish the lead and force Jackson to there, I think this takes them out of their comfort zone. They don't want to have to rely on. He can do it. I mean, he's an, he's uh, um, proved to be fairly accurate. Um, but I don't know that he's really been put to the test uh, in uh, comeback mode. And he's been able to dominate games with the run past option. So I think if they can get a lead, establish, establish the lead with Gurley, 
use their defense. Their defense has got some superstar. I mean, they got two-time um, defensive player of the year, uh, Donald on that team. Um, they got good people in, the, um, in defensive backs. So I think they can uh, match up um, with the Ravens. I, I believe uh, Marquise Brown won't play a factor in this game at all. Jackson's going to have to look to other targets. He does like to go to his tight ends a lot, and um, especially Andrews. So that's something to, to um, factor in as well. So with that game script that I just told you, I'm leaning towards the Rams winning, and I feel like they're going to have to do it to the running game. This is the... Um, uh, lineup that I've been working on. In my captain spot, I have Gurley, which saves me a lot if I don't, if I'm not using Jackson, like I mentioned, it's going to be popular. And then I'm going to put golf in there as well. I'm going to be contrarian, and I feel like if the Rams are going to win, their defense is going to have to be involved and um, maybe produce a turnover or two, maybe take one to the house. And then that, and then that, um, Correlates well with Gurley as well. And I'm going to put one target with Goff. I'm going to go down to Woods. I feel like Woods has the uh, better matchup in this game. Cooks is back tonight. Uh, that helps him a lot. That'll probably help Cooper Cup out a lot too. Cup will probably be um, more popular. He's the um, third highest uh, on the um, on this showdown as far as... Um, salary and then I'm gonna put Lamar Jackson even though I'm not gonna use Jackson in the um, captain spot I think it'd be foolish to totally fade him and uh, I mean it'd be super contrarian because um, he's probably going to be in 80 85 percent of the lineups whether he's in the captain or the um, flex position so um, if something happens to him and the person that did fade Jackson they're probably going to be well on their way to uh, winning a showdown contest. And I'm going to put one of his um, sneaky targets in there. I'm going to put Sneed in there. That leaves me 1800 And leaving money on the table for a showdown contest is not a bad thing. That's, um, I was reading something. The average winning lineups this year have left an average of just over $1,000 on the table. So that's a good thing. It tells me this isn't too contrarian. When you get to building lineups where you got zero left, that you're using all the um, the studs that you can fit in in a, in a certain way, um, then that's not so contrarian. I mean, I'd rather split than not win anything, but I'd rather be contrarian, contrarian and win it all, um, like the guy did last night and went, went into two hundred thousand. Having Kittle in his captain spot. So there's my build, and uh, I will. I'm going to be entering this. If you feel free to copy it if you want, that's not the ideal of this video. I'm just showing uh, my ideal of this video is to show you my process and give you some numbers that you can use to correlate with um, building your lineups. But um, this is the one that I'm going with. Now, as I always do. I like to use an optimizer. I have a couple um, paid uh, subscriptions and I use the optimizers. What I like to do is take the players that I'm interested in and put them in the optimizer. I don't MME the 150 lineups. If I could, I would. I definitely don't have anything against anybody that's able to do that. It just makes sense. And, um, you know, to spend uh, $1,500 to win $200,000 always makes good sense to me. But I don't do that. I build um, some s different uh, lineups and put them in different contests. I might play three or four entries in the $3, a couple head-to-head, -head, uh, some 50-50s and things like that. But I use an optimizer and with the players that I like just so I can see the different randomization of the um, players that I like because I'm not going to see every randomization of the ones uh, that I like in particular. And what I do is I go through and I set the minimum maximum exposures for each uh, player that I like. I generally keep them all close to the same. And so it will be totally random. And on the captains, I pick five or six captains that I like and um, set the uh, exposures to them so I get a good balance and mix of the uh, players that I like. And I only use a couple rules like quarterback and captain 
I want to have two targets and flex. Wide receiver and captain, I want to have quarterback and flex. And just a few things like that. And I, I let it go. And what I always do with you guys is I let you see the first one generated. Well, just because I'm in a good mood today, I'm going to let you guys see two of the uh, uh, lineups that were generated. And remember, these are the players that I'm interested in. So I set the exposures to what I like. And this is what the um, optimizer uh, spit out. It had, in the captain spot, it had golf. It had Zerline. Greg the leg. It had Tucker. Two really good field goal kickers. Who offer a nice, they offer a nice floor. There's nine for Zerline and ten for Tucker. Um, Flex that had Woods, wide receiver. It had uh, Gurley and Lamar Jackson. Left 200. So that's not probably going to be super contrarian for the people that try to get away from. Lamar Jackson in the captain spot. Lamar Jackson, Jackson in the captain spot limits you uh, to your build. But, I mean, he can smash this slate. We we know he can do it. Um, but I'm going to be contrarian with my picks and, and keep him primarily in the flex spot tonight and limit my expectations and lean towards a Rams victory at home. So that was the first one that it it gave, and this was the second one. I thought this was interesting because it was kind of along the lines of what I like. Gurley. Okay, hold on a second here. We have. Okay, we have Gurley and the captain. Both kickers again. Which I normally try to only use one, and I like to use the, the home kicker generally. Or at least the favored kicker. This this point spread's really close, so this you know uh, you could go either way with the kickers. My thought on the kickers is is the team with the highest implied total is going to score more points to go with their kicker. It just makes sense. Or if you're using how another thing I use is whichever team I'm have using the most players from, I use the kicker from that team. So Tucker. And then it had Woods and Golf again. And in the flex, it had Jackson. Now this is certainly not contrarian uh, when you're spending, I mean, you got all the, uh, the, all, the both quarterbacks, running back, both kickers, uh, Spent all 50000 but um, that's what the optimizer gave me. And it did, with the players that I like and the restrictions I put on it, it was able to give me, sometimes it's not able to give me 150 lineups with um, the players that I like and the restrictions because it can only give you so many combinations if, it, that are, if they're not there. Um, and this time in particular, it gave me 122 out of 150 lineups. So there you go. There's the second one. So this wraps up the um, showdown video. I hope this information proves to be useful and valuable for tonight's game. Um, I want to thank you guys for joining me. I really appreciate your time. Um, my subscription subscribers are trending upward, which is a good thing slowly, but they're trending upward. My views are definitely going up. Uh, so that's uh, really helpful. And I'm really uh, thankful for you guys following me. I want to encourage you to post any opinions or comments that you may have below and I try to answer all of them um, make sure tonight that you check the injury report around seven o'clock um, remember um, the last showdown the Rams were involved in a Sunday a Sunday night game it was um, late news that Robert Woods was going to be out so you definitely don't want to put someone in there who might who could provide a zero so keep that in mind as well I will be um, doing showdown videos for the three games on um, Thanksgiving, the, Det the uh, Bears at Detroit, 
Bills at uh, Cowboys and the um, Saints at the Falcons games. I'll be doing the showdown videos. I'll also be doing the regular videos. Um, the quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, defense, special teams, and uh, lineup building videos for week 13 as we start moving towards that. I'll also provide a recap video tomorrow. It really helps me out a lot if you guys um, share this video, like it, subscribe if you're not already a subscriber, and hit that notification bell so you get notified when my next video uh, posts. It helps me out a ton if you do that. Um, as I mentioned, I'll be back um, with the um, recap and then follow that up um, with the um, Thanksgiving showdown video uh, videos. Uh, DraftKings will have a showdown contest for each one of them on Thanksgiving. I'm sure of that. So good luck tonight. Thanks again for joining me. I also wanted to put a uh, just a little plug out there. Um, the player pool that I generated this week, um, you could have used that to um, build a lineup that would have um, smashed the winning lineup for the um, eventual winner of the uh, Millie Maker this past week um, by over 13 points. Uh, the winning line was 229 points. You, the players that I had, you could actually build a lineup that would have scored 241 points. I didn't build it because uh, obviously I had, a, I've had, a, I would have had a much bigger smile than I have now. But I'm going to keep at it. I believe in my process, and I hope you keep joining me. Again, thank you for joining me. My name is Ty Patton. This is all about winning daily fantasy sports. Good luck. Good luck, and I'll see you soon.